we're going to try something brand new this morning because hopefully now we're going to do a live link to Austin, Texas, where hopefully behind me now, Yuri Creel should appear on screen. He is, he's there. Hello, Yuri. Good morning. Good morning, Ian. Good morning, Restore. I've uh, missed you guys. It's uh, very early in the morning here, so, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do my best. I thought you weren't going to reference the fact that you're six hours behind, so you've had to get up really early today to uh, bless us with God's word. It's great to see you, Yuri. Something's happened to the hair, I understand. Is, is, this, a, is this a COVID-19 thing, or is this a new look? Well, you know, somebody asked me if I lost a bet. I didn't lose a bet. I just lost my hair. Okay, so, so you're not going to go for the Trump look. We've not got to look for a, for a, a yellow toupee that's going to appear soon. This is, this is it. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm, 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 I'm good. We'll, just, uh, we'll stick to this. Y you guys can, uh, <clears throat> you can photo edit my hair in afterwards. You can make a plan. I'm sure you can figure it out. Great. The good thing about having a live interview with me, Yuri, is, is you know that I won't embarrass you with anything or, or you know, risk any chance of offence or anything like that, because I would never do that. It's not within my character and nature. Um, I'm aware, Yuri, there's a few people listening this morning or tuning in who probably don't know our history. So we met um, probably about seven or eight years ago when Doxideo Church merged into Restore, and you were our family connection then in South Africa. Do you want to tell everyone watching just a little bit about yourself to give a bit of context to people? Well, uh, it used to be with Doxido Church uh, in South Africa. I, I led uh, a large portion of, of the church there in Pretoria for some time, and it was uh, a lot of fun. But then uh, God called us to the city of Austin, and it, it's been an incredible journey, just uh, packing our lives into eight suitcases a couple of years ago and starting a new church that will be turning two years old uh, in about a month's time from now. So really excited wow. about uh, that and seeing what God wants to do uh, in this great city of Austin, Texas. Uh, so grateful for the relationship and the journey we've been able to have with Restore. Uh, seeing you guys really just grow from, in leaps and bounds, not only grow numerically, but grow in your impact and grow in your intimacy with God. And uh, we're so blessed so from time to time. We actually had Ian preach here via Zoom a couple of weeks ago. And he really blessed us. So, so grateful for the relationship and the fact that we get to uh, serve Jesus together on different sides of the pond. And just to say, Yuri and Karen have been great friends to us at Restore, and they've really helped us on that journey, giving us some really significant inputs. So, so it, it, we thought it'd be great to get Yuri in for one of our Sunday mornings. So if it's okay, Yuri, I'd just like to pray for you, and then we're going to hand over to you and take it away from Austin. Um, after I say amen, you can go, okay? Father, I thank you for the relationship, Lord, that we have together. Lord, I thank you that you work out a friendship. And Father, I want to thank you for all that Yuri carries in his spirit. And thank you for the word that you've been forming in his heart over uh, the last week or two. And uh, Lord, I really believe it's a word in season. So we pray for Yuri right now. We pray that the power of your spirit might rest on him. And Father, we pray for all of us that are tuned in this morning. Lord, we pray that your, that your word might uh, uh, really have an impact on us today, Father, the things that we need to hear from the Spirit of God, the things that we need to be equipped with and resourced with. Father, we pray that you release those this morning, and we pray that we'll have fun as we're together around your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. 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 Thanks, Ian. Uh, what a privilege it is for me to be with you guys. Uh, it's uh, it's so good that we get to tune in. Ian used this word in his prayer just now. He said, for those of you tuning in, well, here's the thing, we're tuning in, right? We get to tune in with God. We get to tune in with what God has in mind for us in the season and at this time. And I, I, I want to challenge you today to stay tuned in, to not, don't, don't sit there and lose the battle of distraction. I, I really believe that in this time and season, we're all fighting a battle of distraction. There's so many options, so many different things around us that we're, we're, we're always doing more than one thing because we're not engaged in the way that we would be if we were engaged in the same room. And, and because of that, I want to challenge you today to take a moment, put everything aside, and just allow the Holy Spirit to come and minister to you. Do not be caught. Be tuned in. Do not be caught by any of these distractions. So my, my grandfather had a dog when I was growing up, okay? It was a small little dog. I, I, I've, I've got a picture of it. It's a little Do Doberman Pinscher, miniature Doberman Pinscher. Pincher. I've got a little 
picture of it here. So, so, so this is what they look like when they're little babies, and, and, and that's what it looked like as a baby. And when they grow up, typically they look like this, okay? So that's a small little dog. And, and if we just go back to the previous picture for a second, you'll, you'll see that when it was, was a puppy, this little puppy, my, my grandfather called it Crumbs, okay? So I, I, I reckon that's a great name for a for a little dog like that. I mean, it's so small, crumbs like crumbs that would fall off uh, biscuits or whatever the case might be. And then, it, it, you know, they grow up and they look like this. And, but my, my grandfathers didn't look the way they looked like, right? Okay, because he loved feeding his little dog, okay? So when it grew up, it looked a little more like this one, okay? Only, I, uh, you know, so um, there was a slight enlargement, okay? So little crumbs wasn't that, that crummy anymore. Uh, in fact, little crumbs was, we, we just jokingly called crumbs cake because it was much more cake-like than what it was crumb-like by the time it grew up. But uh, Little Crumbs, a.k.a. Cake, was, um, w w was my grandfather's dog, and he really loved him. But, but Crumbs had this thing. My, my granddad lived by this busy street, and, and, and you, would, you would run by this busy street, and, and it would be cars and people and everything just kind of um, rushing by there. So it, it made it tough for anybody that, um, you know, was, was wanting to come into his yard because what would happen is he had a gate in front of his house. And, and this gate would run out into this very busy street. But the problem was that, that this little dog, little crumbs, a.k.a. cake, uh, loved running out into the streets. And my grandfather loved this dog. So he was always afraid that one day he was going to open the gate and little crumbs was going to run out the gate. And, you know, somebody's going to cycle over them or a bus is going to go over little crumbs and, you know, there'll be nothing left of, of crumbs slash cake. And um, so my grandfather tried all kinds of things to get this dog to stay inside the yard and not to run out and nothing worked. And what I'm about to say, a little disclaimer, um, this, I'm not propagating this. I'm not saying this is okay. I'm not suggesting you do something like this, uh, nor am I for this. And I would appreciate if you don't email me, if you feel my grandfather was cruel to animals. He, he probably was. I'm just telling you a story, okay? So in the story, what, what happens was he came up with a plan. He said, well, the only way that I, I can get crumbs to not die under the, you know, tires of a car is I've got to really, really scare this little dog, okay? And, and what he ended up doing is he, he bought these firecrackers, okay, that makes a great noise, okay? Nothing much more than make a noise. And he, he, he waited for the gate. He opened the gate, and as crumbs came running down, he threw the firecrackers, you know, just in front of crumbs. So this poor dog had the fright of its life, okay? It, 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 was, it, it ran back tail between the legs. Okay, it didn't run. Crumbs couldn't run. It was more like a rolling action at this point in time, but you get the idea, okay? So, so crumbs slash cake was, was away, and what happened from that day on is, is that dog, whenever the gate would open, it would come charging out towards the cars and the traffic and everything, but there was an invisible line where the firecracker incident happened. And what happens is whenever it hits that line, this dog would stop as if it was running into a brick wall, okay? It's, it's, it's almost like a mime artist. Have you see, ever seen a mime artist in a box? Okay, they, there's an invisible barrier. There's an invisible thing that they, they can't get beyond that point. They can't get over that point because they, they act as if there's something there. Well, Crumbs was convinced that there was an invisible barrier that he couldn't go beyond at that point in time. And, and this is the thing, is I sense just praying for a store community church this last week and considering what it is that God wants me to share with you this morning, I was really convinced that there's invisible barriers like this that some of you are facing. There's spaces where some of you are finding yourselves in a place where you, you just can't get through. You just can't go beyond. You just can't reach that new point. You can't, you, you've created an invisible barrier. And I know it's tough. I know that we have more barriers around us in different ways than what we've had for a long time, and it's lockdowns and social distancing and, and all kinds of six-feet barriers that we're creating around ourselves, and we're living in the space, but this is what I sense God is saying. Do not be limited by the, your circumstances. Do not be limited by what is going on around you, because God's heart for you, God's intention for you, God's desire for you is to live a bigger life. And so I'm coming to you all the way from 
from Austin, Texas, to say that God has more for you. God has a greater life for you. He's got a bigger dream for you. He's got greater intentions for you than what you're living in right now. And if you've, if you've belittled your life because of a virus, if you've belittled your life because of challenges you're going through, if you've belittled your life because of where you're at, I want to tell you that God wants to come and blow open those limitations. He wants to come and break out some, some, some heart's limitations that you've put and maybe these harsh limitations, these invisible barriers are between you and someone else. Maybe you're finding yourself in a place where relationally you've got barriers. You've got relationship barriers between different people, or maybe you're finding yourself in a space where, where you've got barriers between you and someone else that, that is because of something that happened in your history, or you've got a work barrier, or you've got an economic barrier, or you've got a spiritual barrier where you're not finding yourself in a place where you're willing or able to, to share your faith with someone else. Maybe you've got a selfishness barrier. Maybe you're stuck in a space where you're so wrapped up in your issues that you don't care about anyone around you. And I want to tell you, God wants to come and break you free from some of those barriers. The, the message paraphrase in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11 to 13, um, paraphrases this bit where Paul's writing to the Corinthians about the way they live. And, and this is what he says. He says, dear, dear Corinthians, I tell you, uh, um, I cannot tell you how much I long for you to enter into this wide, open, spacious life. We didn't fence you in. The smallness you feel comes from within you. Your lives aren't small, but you're living them in a small way. Open up your lives. Live openly and expansively. God's desire for you is to not live in a small way, but to open up your life and to live openly and expansively beyond the boundaries, beyond the things you've, you've, you've placed for yourself. I want to tell you that God's desire is to do that. Now, I know that some of you are going and saying, Yuri, your, your timing for this message is all wrong. This is the wrong time for this message. Right now, we're hunkering down. The economy's hunkering down. We're Brexiting. We're closing the walls. We're closing our space. We're, we're, it's, it's just us four and no more. I want to tell you, God has the opposite in mind for you. God is challenging you to think broader, not narrower. God is challenging you to trust more, not less. God is hoping that you would walk in more faith than not in less faith. And even in this time of trial, even in the midst of this time of difficulty, even as the, the world is blowing up with racial divisions and all kinds of things, God's challenge for us is not to draw back into our shells and become more politically correct and more whitewash over problems. No, God has challenged us to, us to step out. God is challenging us to, to go out there, to break these lines, to break these borders. A, a great example is the life of Daniel. Daniel is a young man in, in Israel in the height of its decline under the exile, and it's in this, this space that he gets taken away by the king of Babylon, and he um, gets taken away to, to ba Babylon, and it's in Babylon that God challenges him, and, and God uses him to challenge others to say, listen, just because we're in a foreign land, in a, in a different space, and everything around us has changed doesn't mean we need to live small lives. And there's this one bit in Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, where it says, those who, know they, those who do wickedly against the covenant shall corrupt with, with flattery, but the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. I want to speak that over you, Restore Community Church. Those who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Those who live in the knowledge of God, we're, we are of those that come from a long line of of line crosses, of those who, who cross the lines of impossibilities, those who cross the lines of difficulties and hardships. Noah crossed the line of, of impossible odds. Gideon crossed the line of his own self-image or his limited view of self. Moses crossed the line of his physical stutter and many others. We know that God is able to do this, and, and even Jesus was a line crosser. I mean, if you look at his story, he crossed the lines between races. He crossed the lines 
lines between sexes. He crossed all these barriers that people brought up. Jesus crossed all these lines. He crossed the lines of physical impossibility. He walked on the water. He multiplied the food. He did all these things. Why? Because impossible was just a word. Limitation oftentimes is just something that's in our minds. We say, I can't do this, or I can't go there, or I can't reach out, or I'm not able to go there, or I could never live this life that God has in mind for us. And then we live small lives, not because it's God's intention, but because we've given in to invisible barriers. Jesus is challenging you, the ultimate line crosser, the one that crossed the line between death and sin, the one that crossed the line between this divisive line, this chasm between us and God, this distance between the God of the universe and the, uh, that is holy and pure and the sinners that are living short of his plan. He crossed that line. He built that bridge. He's the ultimate line crosser. And this is what he says about you and me that believes in him in John chapter 14 14, verse 12. Jesus says, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. The works that I do, he will do, and even greater works than these. We have been called to greater works than those, us, who believe. We have been called to be line crosses. We've been called to be those who do not settle for mediocrity, who do not settle for survival, but who crosses the line and says, my God, my Jesus did incredible things, and he believes that I will do greater things than these because I believe in I know that this morning as I speak to you, for many of you, your lives are feeling small. Your lives are feeling limited. Your, your challenges might be great. But I want to tell you, even when things feel really small, even when things feel really insignificant, in those moments, God is able to come and do exceedingly abundantly above what we can dream or hope. It's in those moments that, that, that the God of the universe can come and he can do things that is beyond our wildest imagination. If you would just obey him, if you would just believe his word over you today, I want to tell you he wants to do more than what you could ever imagine. There's this, if you take an, if you take an apple and you, you eat an apple, and, and I, I don't know if you eat it from the outside in or the inside out, you know, if you cut it open and eat it. But if you were to cut open an apple this morning, and um, as you would cut open that apple and the, and the, and the apple would, would open up, what, you, what you'd see is that within the apple, the, the apple is the substance, right? The apple is what you're after. But within the apple, there's a, there's a treasure far beyond the apple, and it's called the seed. See, because that seed is insignificant as it seems, the seed within the apple is the real treasure. Abraham Lincoln once made this statement. He said, any fool knows how many seeds are in an apple, but only God knows how many apples are in one seed. See, we don't know the potential of the moments. We don't know the potential of the conversations. We don't know the ability of God, what God could do if we would just step out of our comfort zone, if we would allow God to come and take us, allow God to come and take this moments in our life that might be in seed form right now and amplify it a hundred, a thousand, a hundred thousand times over if we were just to trust Him, if we were just to plant it in him, may we cross the line, may we go beyond the line in the midst of the season. It's at this point in time that I want to change gears a little bit and tell you how. Because I'm pretty sure that some of you, like me, that are highly practical individuals, might have at this point in time become a little frustrated with all this theoretical ideas of, of we need to, we, 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 we need to, uh, 
we need to go beyond, we need to cross the line, we need to go further, but in actual fact, we don't know how. If we knew how, we would have done it a long time ago. And I, I want to give you a couple of practical steps, and the, the steps I want to give you is, is from a moment where a nation had to cross lines. And a nation was in a space where for 40 years, they were stuck. They were literally stuck, okay? So the Israelites come to the border of the promised land. They, they don't believe God. God says, well, for a generation, you're going to wander around in circles. So for a generation, they wander around in circles in the desert. And at the end of this generation of wandering about, they come back to the same spot, to the same border, to the same Jordan River that they were at 40 years ago. So for 40 years, they were literally walking around in circles. And I want to tell you, if you feel like your life is stuck in the same gear, going through the motions of life, and you're just stuck in a rut, I want to tell you that the principles that is displayed in this moment of, of Israel crossing the line, uh, these principles are relevant to your life too. And, 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 and it, it can help you cross the line that God has in mind for you to cross. Okay, so this is what we, this is what we learn from these moments. Okay, so how do we lessons in how to cross the line. The first lesson here, and, and all of these lessons, by the way, is from Joshua chapter 3. So if you go to Joshua chapter 3, you'll find these lessons there. But in Joshua chapter 3 and verse 4, we find the first lesson, and this is what it says. It says, um, it's part of the instructions God is giving them about crossing over. And he says, then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before, but keep a distance of about a thousand yards between you and the ark. Um, do not go near it. So, so God gives them this instruction and he says, when, when, when you cross over, you've got to stay behind the Ark of the Covenant because you haven't been this way before and you've got to be aware of where the Ark is because my presence is going to lead you into where you haven't been before. Well, here's the thing. I believe that in this season, God's presence will lead us to where we've never been before. In this time that we've never faced before, God's presence will lead us into what we've never seen before. Because that's what God does. It, when we're going through seasons and times where we're experiencing things that we've never experienced before, where we're seeing things that we've never seen before, when we're facing things that we've never faced before, it's in these moments that we need to be more aware than ever of the voice of God. So what is God saying? Where is God leading you? What is He leading you into in this next season of your life? You've got to step up to what God is saying. You've got to step up to what God has in mind for you because it's when we step up to that and we say, God, I'm not going to live in the boundaries that I set for myself. I'm going to live the life that you have in mind for me. I'm going to attend to what you reveal because as I attend to what you reveal, I'm going to go places I've never gone before and I'm going to experience things I've never experienced before, but I'm going to live in obedience to you because I might not have been there before, but you, God, are in my future and you've prepared good works for me to walk in and you're calling me into them right now. And the first decision you've got to make this morning as you listen to my words is you've got to say, I am going to respond to God, and I'm going to live according to His Word. I'm going to step up. In American um, baseball, there's, this, there's this, you've got, uh, this saying that you've got to step up to the plate, right? You've got to, you've got to come and play. You've, it's your turn to bat. Then you step up to the plate. Well, I want to tell you, it's our turn as the church of Jesus Christ to step up to the plate and to live in the fullness of what God has in mind for us. It's your turn to step up and live in that. The second principle we find in the story, we find in Joshua chapter 3, verse 5, and it says, uh, uh, Joshua told the people, and this is just before they cross over, he says, purify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do great wonders amongst you. And, 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 and the, the cry here, the desire here, the instruction here, the lesson here is that we need to step out of some things. Purify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do great wonders amongst you. Now, this is what I want to speak over you as you guys are going into this, this time of prayer and fasting. As you're going into this prayer and fasting, as you're giving things up, as you're stepping out of certain things, why don't you ask God, what are the habits, what are the ways of living, what are the things in your life that's holding you back in an old paradigm, in an old way of living, and 
and preventing you from living in the fullness of what God has in mind for you? Why don't you trust God to show you what it is in your life that you've got to step out of because we've got to step up to the plate, but we've also got to step out of certain things. There are things in our lives that are limiting factors that are holding us back, that are keeping us back from the fullness that God has in mind for us. And unless we change those things, we will stay where we are. The challenge is to change them. Unless things change, everything stays the same. Okay, I know that was deep, right? Okay, unless things change, everything stays. Did you tweet that? Don't. It's dumb. Okay, but here's the thing. We've been, we've been called to, to embrace change. And I know some of you guys are, are suffering from adaptability fatigue. You can't change another thing. You've changed where you work. You've changed how you work. You've changed your approach. You've, you've changed how you church, for crying out loud. You, you, you're looking at a screen right now. Well, I know you've made a lot of changes, but I want to tell you that in the, in the words of Alvin Troffer, the change is the process by which the future invades our lives. Change Change is just a part of it. It's William Booth said you can't improve the future without disturbing the present. And some of us needs to cowboy up, needs to buckle up, needs to say, come on, I'm going to do this. Even though I'm in, a, I'm in a space, I'm in a place where I'm so tired of change, I'm going to embrace another change because there are things in my life that's withholding me from the life God has in mind for me. And you've got to step out of things. The third and Final principle here is that as they come to this water's edge, as they find themselves in this space where they're about to enter into the promise of God, it's, it's interesting that, that they, they, for 40 years, have been walking around in circles without, without reaching it, dreaming about it, hoping for it, knowing that God is more for them, but not living in it. And after 40 years of doing that, the, the thing is, when they reach that line, it says that the River Jordan was in flood. And what this means is that this river that kind of snakes down, dividing these two spaces, the promised land and the 40 years of walking around in circles. This river is in flood. So the snaky river becomes one big water mass. It's impossible for them to cross. It's impossible for them to get from this side to the other side. So as much as they've stepped up to the plate and said, yes, God, we believe you, as much as they're stepping out of and they said, we're going to purify ourselves, we're going to leave behind, we're going to let go of the things that hold us back, as much as they've gone through all of that, they, they come to this border and this line is thicker, is harder, is more impossible than ever. But you see, in God's instructions in Joshua chapter 3, there's an interesting bit in verse 15 and 16 where God says that they need to just step into the water. And this is what it says in verse 15. Now the Jordan River was in flood stage during, um, all during the harvest. Yet as soon as the priests carried the ark, reached the Jordan, and their feet touched the water's edge. The water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away, so the people crossed over opposite Jericho. See, and, the, and the, here's the thing, is it was impossible for them to do what God has called them to do. And in many ways, it's impossible for us to live life at the scale as large as God has in mind for us. But once we step in, once we say, God, I'm willing to take a step, I'm willing to take a leap, I'm willing to make the change and do this, what God does is way beyond what we could ever do. God does the impossible when we do the possible. God does the beyond when we do what we can. And as they stepped in, God did what they couldn't do themselves. May we step up to the plate because we've never been this way before. May we step out and purify ourselves. Let, let go of some things that are holding us back. And may we step in. May our feet touch the water. May we step into the fullness and the greatness and the wholeness that God has in mind for us. And may we see God do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond what we could ever dream or do in the midst of this hard season. May we see the miracle working God work miracles in our lives. Your life is not small. May you not live it in a small way. Your life is not small. May we not live it in a small way. May God come and, and enlarge our territory. 
may God come and enlarge the space that he's, that he's got in mind for us. And may we step into all that God has for us. Let's pray. Lord, I honor you and I thank you that even in this moment as we get to pray together, Lord God, across the, the waters, across time zones, across space, Lord, I, I know that, Holy Spirit, you are as present with every individual in their homes as you are in the studio in, in London as you are here in Austin, Texas. Holy Spirit, thank you that you cross the lines between space right now. And as you bring us together, God, I want to pray that you, Holy Spirit, would come right in this moment and every person within the sound of my voice would experience you calling them to step up. Lord, thank you that you are leading us through this time in this way that we have never been before. Lord, I pray that you will give us the faith and the guts and the courage to step out of what is holding us back and Lord, may we step into the promised land knowing that we can't make your promises true. That is the role of the one that made the promise, and he is faithful. Lord, I want to pray and echo the words of Jesus when he prayed and say, Lord, let your kingdom come. Lord, your kingdom that is higher, that is greater, that is bigger than is better than anything we've ever seen or tasted. Lord, let your kingdom come and let your will be done in the lives of every person that I'm praying with this morning as it is in heaven. So let it be on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you for that, Yuri. That was an incredible word and felt so much like a, like a word in season and, and now word. So we want to thank you so much for uh, bringing that. Uh, we're going to continue to worship, to press into God, to respond to what God's spoken to us today. We're releasing Yuri so he can go and preach to his own church now. But let's present ourselves again to God and let's uh, invite the Holy Spirit to continue to work as we worship Jesus and as we wait on him.